tell you about the film and my role. Uh, Fire Rises is a British, I'm going to say thriller kind of action uh, movie. Um, and I play Richard Fire, the lead, um, and it follows my character and uh, his kind of journey from uh, kind of coming out of what he used to be, a life he used to lead, which was, you know, of a certain, uh, a certain nature. And yeah, moving away from a life that he's, that he's had as a mercenary and as somebody who does a lot of bad things. And he's kind of created a, a, a normal life for himself. However, unfortunately, through circumstance and um, pressures, he kind of gets pulled back into that world. Uh, and yeah, from there onwards, the movie takes a, uh, a different journey back, A, into that world, but B, also into a bit of a revenge movie as well, a bit of a revenge story. So yeah, there's lots of elements to that. Um, but yeah, to sort of summarise the, the film in, in itself, it does go through those genres. There's lots of action in there. There's lots of um, um, lots of performance stuff as well, as you follow like Richard Fire go through these stages, which is quite nice, especially for me as an actor, because you can kind of start in one place and end in, in, in another. So the arc of the film is... Um, yeah, it kind of goes through the genres. Uh, how did I get involved in the film? I got a call from Damien, um, the producer, one of the producers, one day, um, one Wednesday afternoon, and I really specifically remember that because I was shooting a self-tape for another movie at the time, uh, and I remember s sitting in my, my room when I was sort of set up the studio and stuff, and uh, got this call, and... Yeah, it was from Damien, who had this movie, um, and he knew my work through Greg, Greg Hall, who I know you guys have spoke to a few times and is sort of a writing partner of mine, and we've done lots of work over the years. And yeah, they, they needed an actor, they needed somebody that they could trust to kind of come on board quite short. Um, there were a few um, pre-production issues in terms of people dropping out and people changing, often the case in you know the, the business that we do. Um, but this was very last minute. So, yeah, I got a call on the Wednesday afternoon. I had to write, I asked for the script. I had a couple of hours to read it and kind of really had to make a decision very quickly whether I was going to uh, get on board with it. And, um, yeah, by the afternoon, I'd, I'd rung Damien back and had another conversation with him. Um, and, yeah, suddenly, um, I think six days later, which is why I remember it's a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So five days, if you don't include the Wednesday, um, it was day one for the shoot, so not the most prep time I've ever had. Every job you feel under pressure, you know, um, because you care and you always want to do everything you can. There is, there is a thinking behind over-preparing, I would say that. Um, I am an actor who does like to be prepared. I normally do a lot of work in terms of prep, um, in terms of research, script work, character work, even just sitting in imagination, all that kind of stuff. But uh luckily i've been doing this a long time i think this was maybe my 13th or 14th feature over the years so it was something um something i was quite used to because also as a as an unestablished actor in terms of you know nobody calls me six months before and gets me on board it's normally quite last minute or i'm auditioning for a role and the dates are already in place you often don't have a lot of time to prep anyway so what you get as a as a as a good old-fashioned jobbing actor is very good at prepping very quickly and so, yeah, there was a pressure, but um, once I'd accepted the job and started talking to Paul, the director, we could have conversations on what he wanted or the things that I had expectations for, for the role. But equally, as a sort of experienced actor, I could jump a few, uh, jump a few bridges. So I know that we changed the schedule slightly. So a few of the early days, the first few days of filming, there was minimal dialogue there was lots of moving around scenes kind of you know walking scenes so we could start you know getting into it like that rather than jump straight in with lots of either action or lots of dialogue or lots of emotion so there was a kind of almost like prepare each day kind of thing going on as long as I knew in terms of the schedule I could prep each night each day and I would do that anyway you know if I was on a shoot for three and a half weeks I would you can do all the prep you you, you want but you would always be preparing anyway as you go along. So you know the dailies, you're gonna be shooting these scenes and even though you've got all your notes and got all your research, you'd be looking back over those, over lunch, over breakfast, over in between doing stuff. Um, and then like I said, there was a few shortcuts I found. Uh, a friend of mine, um, a very good friend of mine is also a filmmaker, very into his scores, David Hillman. He, I said to him, listen, this is the role, this is the film. And I kind of pitched it to him in this kind of mad frenzy of a phone call. I said, give me some music. 
And so he created this great Dropbox for me that was full of music that really matched kind of the scenes, the kind of essence of some of the emotions and the art that this character went through. And I really used that as a really quite nice bass line. And actually, you know, everyone kind of knows whether you're an actor or not. You know, you listen to certain music, it gets you in a certain frame of mind, certain thought process, certain emotional state. And so I kind of used that as a framework. And then I just built the character almost day by day. You know, we were shooting and shooting, and it was one of those films, and you hear actors talk about this a lot, by the end of the shoot, you go, I know this character. Can we start again? Can we start again from the beginning? But um, so there was pressure in that sense. But equally, I think the the really nice thing is the set and the way that the, we shot this movie was very family orientated. We were together a lot of the time. You know, I was working very closely with Paul, the director, and um, Harvey, the cinematographer, and, 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 the, and all the crew, actually, all the team. We were together every day. You know, even in one part, or well, three or four parts of the movie, we were even staying in the same place for three or four days, or maybe, I think we were in the hotel for maybe five days. And then we were in Spain for, I think, five, six days. So there were chunks where we were together a lot. So that pressure, I suppose that took the pressure off a little bit because we could always talk about it. There was always room to talk about what we're doing tomorrow, how we're gonna do that, how's that gonna look? So in that regard, um, that was a help. Really excited. I was really excited. Yeah, I thought I thought the movie had lots of really interesting bits about it. I think for me as an actor, you know, I've been sent scripts. I'm going to say like this before, and all I mean by that is this kind of genre movies that are very British and very thriller-esque and, and revenge-esque. However, what I really liked about this movie particularly is that is that arc that Fire goes on. You know, he starts in one place. He's got history you don't know about. Things happen to him that then draws him to a different place, and actually towards the end he ends up a very different person. So that was exciting to prep for and, and to look at that. And, and although we didn't shoot linear, we didn't start here, go there and end there, there was a little bit of that in the way that we shot. So that was exciting for me. There were, you know, there was always a physical prep to it. I know there was going to be a lot of, lot of action. So I know that there was a couple of stunt teams that I worked with, which was really good. And again, we were lucky enough to have time, not as much time as you'd love. I mean, bigger budgets, you might, you know, I just came off a thing last year where I spent, I think the first week, not even on set, just with the stunt team. You know, every day we were in the gym going through all the stunt stuff, all the fight stuff, all the prep stuff, all the horse riding, all that kind of stuff. We didn't have the time or the money to do this, and you rarely do on British movies, um, and you rarely do in TV as well. So, you know, in that regard, you kind of just have to jump in with both feet. I was excited and I was a little nervous as well because of the amount of prep time, but I just focused on some key elements really. You know, I always keep myself physically fit, so I'm always ready for a role if the phone goes like this. So I wasn't worried about that. Um, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd been in the gym, I felt physically strong, I felt like in good condition. We weren't long out of COVID. So I'm trying to think how long out of COVID we were, if we was even out of it. Um, so I'd spent most of the the year, like most people, doing a lot of walking. Um, I had the gym in the in the. We had such a great summer during the COVID lockdown, didn't we? So I was out in the out in the garden with all my gym stuff. And again, that's part of my prep as an actor to always kind of be ready for anything. Um, and so yeah, I was excited. I was I, I was really excited, and it, and it was nice to get back on set. It was nice to get back out as an actor. You know, I'd been still teaching acting over Zoom. Um, so I'd still been having that contact with creative people and new actors and directors and those kind of things. But I can't, I'm trying to think how long from when we went, started shooting Fire, how long it had been since I'd been back on a set, you know, doing some filming. It might have been a year because we'd had lockdown and COVID. It might have been longer. Um, so that was exciting. It was exciting to get stuck back in, really. Um, and again, there is something in... Um, I think there's something in, in not having enough time to prep and think about things that you have to rely on your instincts. And again, most actors will say, you know, jobbing actors, working actors, established actors, whatever you want to call us or, or them, you know, you're always ready. You know, it's that thing of like, oh, you, you know, you, how, would you, how would you prepare for this role? Well, I've, every role you've been preparing for 20 years, really. You know, you do your training, you, know, you spend five years training and learning your craft and then every job, you're just trying to get better. You're just trying to achieve something. And in every job, you you hopefully achieve something, but you're also yearning for more. Oh, what didn't I get right? What can I get better at? And so for me, a good actor should always be in that state of already prepped. Do you know what I mean? So there's, there's an exciting thing about that. And when you're not given enough time, when you haven't got time to do lots of scratchy beard thinking, 
you just have to go on your instincts. And again, those instincts are built over being an actor for 20 years, you know, or, or, or you could say even longer, because I'm saying 20 years from when you sort of start as a qualified actor. But really, like most of us in this business, we've been playing characters since we were five years old and we just haven't stopped. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we're just getting away with it now as an adult. Yeah. Every role has its own challenges. Every role has its more unique challenges. So, yeah, would I say that this role is the most challenging? I suppose given the amount of prep, given the size of the role, I mean, you know, fire is pretty much in every scene, bar a few bits at the end and some bits in the middle. Um, in terms of, you know, the speed in which we made this movie and, of course, the arc of the character, which is always really, really important, you know, to, to be able to portray that beginning, middle and end of a character. It was definitely it was definitely a challenge. I'm not sure if it is the most challenging because, again, I could look at all the stuff I've done in all the years I've been acting and, and they all stand out as a challenge for one reason or another. And if they're not, why were you doing it? You know, why was you doing it? And, and, and why isn't it challenging? Are you not trying to push the boundaries? I think for me as an actor, if you're being safe, if nothing's a challenge, whether it's a corporate job you're doing, you know, whether you're, I don't know, delivering quality and diversity on film or, you know, just before Christmas, I did a little um, charity film, you know, to raise awareness for autism. And, you know, I'm playing a disgruntled customer, but my role is to, to play that role in the best way I can. So that presents its own challenge. So um, it certainly was a challenge and there were loads of elements of that that, that, that that play into these factors, like I say, time, budget, restraints, you know, all these kind of things. COVID itself, you know, some of those environments were quite difficult because we had so many restrictions. You know, we were doing tests every morning. I was desperately trying not to get COVID because I was in every day. If I wasn't on set, I don't know what we'd have shot. So I was like trying to avoid people. Um, not, you know, <laughs> not avoid them in that sense, but certainly trying not to get ill. Um, but yeah, I mean, it certainly presented massive challenges, but I think the truth of it is we were so lucky to have such a lovely team, both in front of camera, in camera, in front of camera and behind camera, that everyone was working towards the same goal, which was how best to make this movie, given the circumstances, whether that's budget, time, COVID or anything else. I think my favourite scenes are the ones with the backstory. I really like the stuff where you see where you see his family, where you see the relationship with people like the neighbour. Um, and again, I don't want to give too much away about the movie, but, you know, there's lots of intricate relationships around his home life. Um, but equally, I really enjoyed working with the stunt team and doing loads of action. And they were long, hard, really tough physical days. And... Um, you know, I like watching those back because I know how much work went into them. You know, I mean, every scene had, had, had lots of, you know. I also like the stuff that's in Spain. <laughs> you know, that's quite nice to shoot when you go out to Spain and, you know, and shoot. Although, again, that came with its own challenges. You know, you're talking to a redhead here. So every day I had to hide in the shadows. As soon as we were saying cut, there was an umbrella brought in. Otherwise, I'd have looked like a beetroot throughout it because uh, it was absolutely roasting hot. Uh, and some of the actors could, you know, happily sit and sunbathe because their character was supposed to have lived out there. So they were happy to get a tan, but all I'd have done is got burnt. So that was um, that was hard um, and, and had its own challenges. But again, I really like the look of those. I really like the look of those in the movie because it looks different. There we are suddenly in a different location and it's got a different feel to it. So there, you know, I, I really like those scenes too. Yeah, good question. Where would I have, what, where did I get my inspiration? It was funny because I had such little time to prep. Sometimes I would have used that. Sometimes I do. I am an actor who likes to look at other actors, you know, and, and, I, and, and other characters. And you think, oh, I'll steal that and I'll steal that. And I've never done a character where I'm trying to be that particular person, but I might steal an element of that person. You know, recently I did a, a, a World War II movie and, um, I'd been for ages trying to get Ollie Reed into like a character. I'd really like Oliver Reed. And I just love the way he sort of talks and, and, and the way he is. And I was always trying to cram him in somewhere. And again, not as a, I'm not, an, you know, an impressionist. It's not my job. You know, I'm, I'm an actor. But I like taking traits of characters and people I know. And I sort of managed to cram in some, of, some Ollie Reed into that character. But with Fire Rises uh, and with, with Richard Fire there kind of wasn't time to come up that with that. So I looked at lots of the kind of movies that we 
kind of what we talked about earlier. I looked at the kind of British gangstery movies and the genre movies and, you know, everything from, from Get Carter and, and Long Good Friday all, all the way up to, you know, as we were talking earlier, like Kill List and things like this, all these kind of movies where you have these very British characters. But equally, there was a military background. There was a mercenary background. So I was kind of looking at films with, with the, you know, like your John Wicks and those kind of movies as well. So I was looking at that. But with Fire, I didn't really take... I didn't choose anybody in particular. I don't think there was really time for that. There were little interesting elements that came up. And again, because the prep time was so small, and like I said to you earlier, I was almost prepping on a daily basis and trying to come up with ideas. But again, sometimes as actors, I think as creatives, we can throw too many ideas at it. So sometimes you've got to be really simple and say, right, well, what's this scene about? What's this character about? What's driving him at this point? And because there are different sections in this film for fire to go through in his arc, you could just focus on those. So when I was at home, when fire is in his own environment, I was thinking, well, I'm a family man. Well, I'm a family man. So what elements is that? You know, I think in life we all play characters. You know, you at work is different from you sat on the sofa with your wife or or out with the lads. And, and, and so I sort of lent into that really and said, well, who's fire at home? How is he at home? Where's his focus? Where's his... Where's his drive? And actually, when he's in a very different place later on in the film, where is his, where is his drive? Where is his status? Because that's one of the biggest things for Fire. His status fundamentally changes. You know, he comes from. You know, it starts with him being very, sort of downtrodden, really. You know, and, and holding back all the things that he's probably capable of, and and come easy to him. And actually, life for him is very difficult. All the easy stuff, normal stuff in life getting a job, having a family, running a household, all of that's very complicated and, and, and very stressful for him and also very different. And so it was, it was just about drawing on that. So what's, what's him at home? What's him in a, in a situation where it's life or death? How does, what does he draw on? You know, and again, I, I took a lot of inspiration from that music I said to you about earlier. What I did with this script, and I've done ever since actually, is I took the music that, that my friend David got for me and I chose pieces of music that, that made me feel like, ah, this is this song. This bit of the film is this piece of music and this piece of this, you know, and, and there was even things like, you know, like his wife, you know, the character. You know, and, I, and I found a piece of music. That I thought, yeah, this is him at home with his wife. This is her piece, you know, and I would call it Maddie. You know, I'd call it names that, that, that related to those characters, you know. So that, that was really um, that was really helpful for me to draw on that, because, again, you know, suddenly one day you're, you, you might only be seven days into the shoot and already you're in this really big scene, emotional scene, you've just met these actors. But again, we get used to this as actors. You know, if you do a telly, if, you do, if you're a day player and you, you come, into the, come into a job, you've got to be as good as all the guys who've been on this job for six weeks. So you get good at just being able to turn that on and, and, and bringing that preparation to the forefront very quickly. And again, I think part of the craft, dare I say that word, is sticking to what you understand and know, which is the truth. You're always looking at trying to find the truth in a scene. So actually we can add character and add the way he talks and holds and all those, you know, holds himself and his energy. And that's all good and that's all great Stanislavski, crafty building of a character. But sometimes you just gotta be truthful. How is he in this moment? What's he looking for in this moment? What's the inspiration? What's the, what's the you know, intention behind this moment? And sometimes you have to be ballsy and just go for that. And, and actually, sometimes that turns out to be really good. There was like a couple of physical traits, very sort of plain physical traits that I took. And actually, it came from a conversation with Paul, the director. Um, you know, I'm sure he won't mind telling you, but, you know, he used to, he used to work in security. And, and we talked about hands and like how like doormen and security guys always have their hands out in front of them because just in case they need them, you know, in case there's, you know, something... And so very early on, I thought, well, what's the opposite of that? So I kind of, in the, in the times where, where, where fire isn't ready for a fight, whether it's metaphorically or, you know, actually like, you know, emotionally, he's trying to do the opposite. I had this thing of holding my hands the opposite. So I had my hands behind me, you know, and I, and I made sure that during the film, when he was in that mode, his hands weren't in front, they were actually the opposite. So I kind of had this gave me, and that kind of with the costume gave me a different physical stance because suddenly I was kind of hunched a little bit and my hands were in a different position. And no one will probably notice it, but to me, it, it showed a different side of fire. And then later on, when fire suddenly is much more back in prep mode, suddenly the hands can be in front. 
and they can be forward and they don't have to be in this position. So there were little elements of that that kind of ended up physically uh, informing that character. No, I'd not, I'd not worked with anyone on that, on that set at all. I don't think... Um, Damien knew my work through Greg and I think Paul knew some of my work through Greg, but I didn't know any of the guys at all. So it was a really... It was a baptism of fire because I... <laughs> excuse the pun. But I think I met Paul the night before we shot. We'd spoke on the phone, if I remember rightly. We'd, we'd had a few conversations and, you know, that he was great to, to, for me to ring him up and ping questions at him and those kind of things. We did a Zoom call as well. I asked if, it, if he wouldn't mind me getting some of the actors who played the characters in the family and the neighbour and if he wouldn't mind giving me their numbers and we kind of WhatsApped each other. And we had actually had a Zoom call because I wanted to kind of say hello and hey and this try and build a rapport before we ended up on set. Because otherwise, again, you know, you suddenly it's day one. You've just met somebody like Charlie, who played my wife, you know, and Charlene. And, and you know, you, 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 you've got to say, hey, we've been married for years. We're in love. We're this. And you've just met. You're still working out if, if you even like, like each other in life, you know. So I tried to kind of build those barriers very quickly. With Paul, it was very easy. You know, I knew when I met Paul, I thought, we're just going to get on. And we have ever since, really. You know, we, well, I don't think we've stopped talking, really. Probably me hassling him on the phone like everyone else. Um, when's this movie coming out? But, um, yeah, yeah. Um, that was really lucky, and, I, and, I, and yeah, I'm pretty sure I met Paul the night before in the hotel when he had to do, uh, when he had to shove a, you know, a cotton bud up my nose because he was doing all the testing and all the COVID stuff, which they were really strict on, which they had to be, you know. Um, but yeah, and, and, and then I think the next morning, bang, we were, we were shooting. So um, it was a very, very quick turnaround. But, you know, that said, I've done, I, I remember one of my early TV jobs years ago, ITV, I never even met a director. And I mean, like, even when we were shooting, he was behind a bank of monitors over there. I heard his voice once or twice. I met the first day do you came and gave me some notes, but we never even spoke. And then when you're done for your day, you, you kind of want to say thank you and shake hands and say goodbye, but they're busy on to the next thing. They're not being rude. They've got a schedule to get. So, you know, I mean, that's why I've always really liked working in an independent film because you do, you do work like a family. It's the only way you can work because of money restraints and restrictions and all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, it was very quick that, um, I think it was day two or day three, we were in the car going to set and already, you know, I remember Paul and Damien talking, going, well, we can't imagine anyone playing fire already. You know, they were, and that was a really, they were, they were, whether they remember that or not, that was a great thing for me to hear. That kind of gave me some confidence three days in, because again, the prep time was so small that, you know, you are, and often you are as an actor anyway, you've made clear decisions based on hopefully some clear intentions and some clear work. Whether you know they're right or wrong, whether the director or the producer or anybody else on set likes them or not, you don't know. Sometimes you never find out. So you have to just trust in the work. You have to trust in what you've been doing all this time, that you have an idea of what you're doing. And, you know, I like to think... I sort of know what I'm doing, you know, now. Although every job is like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know. So, yeah, that was nice. And uh, I think we, because I, again, because I was in so much of that film, because it was pretty much every single day, and even the days I wasn't filming or my schedule was a little bit, you know, a little bit less than others, I'd be on set anyway because often we were staying away, whether it was in Spain or whether it was in the, the hotel, wherever that was. I can't remember where it was now. But, um you know, I'd still be on set anyway and I'd be watching what's going on because I'm that kind of actor. You know, I like being on set. I like watching films being made, whether I'm in front of the camera or behind the camera. So um, so quickly, you know, we established a nice relationship um, and that worked really well throughout, the, throughout making this movie. Is there any chance of seeing Fire Rise again? Uh, I'd like to think yes. Um, I would certainly be interested, be, you know, because of the way, because I enjoyed making this movie. Um, and I think it's great. I think, you know, what the guys have done with this film is, is, is really good. Um, and I think there's an audience for it. I, I really do. But I suppose the unfortunate thing about what we do for a living is that's the numbers people. You know, I couldn't tell you. And, um, and I, don't, I don't, you know, the business side of it, and, you know, we talked about it this morning, you know, the business side of this industry, especially in the British film industry, which we don't really have. We don't really have a, a British film industry. It's such pockets full of different people doing different stuff, really. It's not like a studio-based thing like in America. Um, I think the decision will be probably to do with money. 
probably to do with success, probably to do with numbers of views or, you know, whether the big platforms snap you up or you get distribution and all those kind of things. I certainly feel, you know, if Paul wanted to do something again um, and, and, and wanted me involved, I would certainly be up for that conversation, definitely. And I think we'd probably start with, OK, well, where, where did we go wrong or where did we where were the challenges on the first one and how can we make those better? How can we now lean into this? And you'd like to think, I suppose that's why, you'd like to think it's why people do sequels, not just because there's a producer somewhere or the money people want to make more money. You'd like to think that you want to investigate that character a little bit more. There's a lot more life in this character. There's a lot more life in this story, I think. So for that reason, it would be good to, to delve in. And I don't feel like we got anywhere near to the full explanation of where this character comes from and where he's going. And again, his life exponentially changes a few times within the first movie, enough for saying to say that if we started again, we'd be starting from a different starting place. And that's enough for me as an actor to go, great, here's another challenge. You know, we could be in another year's time and you saying, well, what are the challenges of this movie? And me going, well, they were different from that movie. You know what I mean? So in that regard, it would be, it's always nice to go and do that. And the chance to go and work with Paul, and the team, you know, that would that would be great. We had a good, it, although it was hard, and it should be hard. You know, it, filmmaking shouldn't be easy. Otherwise, you, you are going to, you could question, well, why is it easy? Are we not doing? Do we not care enough here? Are we not doing things right? Um, you know, I, I like the hard work of it. I like the long hours. I like the graft. Well, I, I'm sure, you know, that, that that Paul and his team would would talk about doing things differently potentially for them, the things that they wanted to do, and explore for the for another movie. But yeah, I would. Um, I'd certainly be up for it if, you know, me and Paul wanted to, to talk about doing that, yeah. Yeah, thanks very much for um, seeing us, John. It's been great to come down and, and, and talk to Britflix. I know that um, uh, you, you guys do a really good job um, in terms of pushing British film and, and independent film as well. And uh, it's great down to come down and, and, and chat with you at last. And uh, hopefully we'll talk again. Thanks very much.